and welcome to Mobile Youth TV. My name is Graham Brown. Today we're going to talk about fans and to help us do this, I'm joined by my two esteemed colleagues, Josh Dallywell and Freddie Benjamin. How are you doing, guys? Very good, Graham. Doing well, thank you. Excellent. All right, let's talk about fans. Josh, you've been contacted this week. What we do is we provide a newsletter to people in the industry and provide analysis and insights in that newsletter and people often email us back and ask us questions about the things that we're talking about. You got a question come in this week that you thought would be interesting to share with the mobile TV viewers today. What was that question, Josh? A very interesting question here this week, Graham. Um, one of our readers asks, how important is it for a big brand like Nokia to have a loyal and passionate fan base? Okay, and to put this into some kind of context, the 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 person sending in the question says, "Well, you know, it's okay for for companies like Apple, who have a small and cult following." Okay, their whole business is dependent upon this small fan base. But for a big company like Nokia, is that really important? All right, that's an interesting question. We get asked this kind of question all the time, and you can replace Nokia with any big brand in there, right? Let's break this down first, Josh. I think there's two parts to that question. The first one a bit, um, you know, about Apple being a small cult brand. You know, it's got that following which has built up over a number of years. Not every brand has that kind of customer base. I think we need to put that into context, though, eh? which is basically, you know, is Apple really a small cult brand? I mean, if, the, if you look at the, the financials, you've got a, a company with a market cap of $300 billion, which, put that into context, you know, that's the equivalent of Google plus another 50 percent or you know you could add in Microsoft and Nokia and you'd still be smaller than Apple so I think the idea that it's perceived as a small cult brand really plays to its strength you know it thinks like that it behaves like that but you know it has all the benefits of being a large organization I think the problem is with some brands is that you know they're not as big as Apple but they think like they are a big brand so, you know, that plays to very much their disadvantage. Let's look at the second part of that question. How important is it for brands like Nokia to have fans in the first place? Well, I think, you know, we need to look at the market shares and how these brands have progressed over the last year. You know, you look at the handset market and how brands have competed against each other and look at the data and you get a clear indication as to, you know, two stories really emerging from that market. On the one hand, you've got the brands with fans, and on the other hand, you've got the brands with simply customers. And what's happening to those brands is really two different outcomes. Freddie, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that split market in the handset sector and, and really, you know, what's happening there. Yeah, definitely. In the past year, both Apple and BlackBerry have emerged as major mobile brands. They have done this on the basis of having fans, while brands like Nokia, Sony, Ericsson, and Motorola, who rank low on fans, they have been losing market share. And this is mainly because fans reach out to three times more customers than a regular buyer in terms of word-of-mouth marketing. Fans are the ones who influence other buyers to go purchase the brands that they recommend. So basically, the brands with fans are gaining market share, right? That's what's happening in the market. To what extent is that a function of, you know, the handset market being a mature market now? So people aren't necessarily buying their first handset. They've already got a handset. They're kind of looking around and listening to other people in terms of recommendations. So, you know, how is that whole process happening right now, Freddie? In terms of uh, what you said about the mature market, mobile handsets are really moving away from feature phones to a smartphone era where every phone has a camera, every phone can play music, every phone has a QWERTY keypad or a touch screen. Features are no longer the differentiating factor for mobile handsets. And what people are really looking for is what my friend is using. I get the impression now that, you know, what's happening, especially with young people, is, is we're moving away from an era where previously, you know, it was about the handset companies and their marketing. And, you know, one handset company was known as the, the camera handset or the music handset. And the other one was known as, you know, the mobile internet handset or the one that was good for texting and so on. You know, that's how they differentiated themselves. And that's how they marketed themselves through their advertising to young people. And now we're at a stage where pretty much every handset's the same in functionality. They really don't know what the differentiators are. And so basically what's happening is it's up to young people, speaking to young people, to really distinguish what the differentiators are between each handset. So, you know, you can get this app on Android, you can get this app on Apple, and it's those conversations which are really shaping, you know, what people are buying at the moment. And I guess 
coming back to the point about does Nokia need fans? Well, in the context of that conversation, absolutely yes, because this is what it's about. It's about Nokia being recommended to other people by the Nokia fans, not necessarily Nokia marketing at all. So I guess, you know, that, that would be the short answer to the question, Josh. Just on your point about young people not necessarily being able to differentiate one handset company from another purely based on the features because the features are all the same as you, as you say now w would you say that that's what's had an impact on for example sony ericsson sales over the last couple of years because obviously sony ericsson was widely known as for its walkman phones and also kind of the quality of its cameras with cybershot yeah, definitely. Well, where are we now with Sony Ericsson data? Where are we at the moment? I think from the last bit of data that I saw about Sony Ericsson, their global sales have dropped something like 40% over the last two years from a high in 2007. Just looking at the market share data, for the second quarter of 2010, they had a 3.5% market share coming in at fifth behind BlackBerry. And actually the next quarter, they got overtaken by Apple as well. So losing that fifth position all right so they're out of the top five is that what we're saying yes so i guess the question is is why does that happen well yeah you're right they used to be the well they were at one stage the music handset right with the walkman and then they were the cyber shop i guess they had those distinguishing features which in in the marketing department it would be easy to sell onto the market you know buy a sony ericsson because of this particular feature which gave them a you know a nine or 12 months advantage on the market but now they're in a situation where you look at where they are is that they're pretty much the same so you know how does sony ericsson differentiate itself well you know if it's opting for the android platform as well then really now down to what people can use on that platform and how they can get young people to discover that and it's a completely different ball game you know we're moving away from paid media now to earned media. This isn't simply about switching from one way of doing things to you know adding on social media to what they do. It is, it's a completely different mindset. The people that win this next stage in handsets with young people are really the people who adopt the new mindset rather than the people who have the best social media marketing strategy. Um, just one other quick question I want to ask here, which is that say for example, I worked for Nokia. I could point towards our Facebook fan page and say, you know, we've got almost two million fans on Facebook okay is that what constitutes a fan base Freddie how does that compare to other brands on Facebook is 2 million a lot I mean in context I wouldn't say it's a lot I think Blackberry has about 5 million and uh, Sony Ericsson actually has more fans than Nokia on his Facebook page right but what's interesting about the Facebook page is that half of them are likely to recommend the brand to their peers which means you already have a place there where, where you can go in and identify your fans. It's really up to the brand to go in and make the effort to identify your fans and then and empower them to go out and do their advocacy for the brand. So I think the 2 million fans is fine, but you know what we're saying here is that basically, unless you're engaging them, unless you're actually providing them with tools to go out there and empowering them somehow to go out there and tell their story to their friends, to their peers, then you know you might as well just consider them as faceless customers, right? Yes. Uh, I think maybe for a, a future newsletter, um, what we can actually do is look at some case studies here of brands who've been able to take quite a, you know a large Facebook fan page and convert that into uh, you know a loyal and passionate fan base where they're actually engaging in a dialogue. Yeah. I think, you know, it's important as well to remember, Josh, it's not just Facebook. And, you know, that's the obvious choice. There are brands out there that have done this very well, not necessarily using the Facebook route. I mean, we talked about Nintendo recently as a great example, yeah? And they didn't, you know, Facebook was part of the strategy, but not the strategy, if that makes sense. You know, they were actively out there doing other stuff. And they, Facebook just happened to nicely dovetail into that, right? And then there are many other brands that we've covered in our material, which, um, you know, for them, Facebook is just a bit part of it. So I think it's a convenient starting point, but I don't think we should, you know, we should, shouldn't lose focus of the fact that it's just a means rather than the end itself. Even if you talk about Apple, I mean, Apple does not have an iPhone fan page on Facebook. It has an iTunes fan page, so it's completely different. They're not using Facebook to identify their fans or activate them. They're doing it on a grassroots level offline. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Even they do have online stuff like, for example, they've got Apple Campus China. It's uh, an Apple community aimed at the sort of more design and creative edge of people in China, you know, young people. 
and they have like you know iPod spotters and stuff like that. It's really interesting what they're doing. It's quite unique to that market. But again, you know, they haven't gone through the Facebook route to do that. They've obviously created their own thing there. But it's fascinating to see that they're actively doing this stuff, which is off the radar of most marketers. This is Josh again. Um, if I'm working at Nokia, I'm working in marketing, I'm working in propositions, etc. I'm working in youth. Uh, what's one thing I can actually take away from this week's TV show? Yeah, it's a great question. Often get asked that, and it all comes down to this one point. Find your fans. The rest is mere detail. And I'd put it to Nokia that the reason why they are in their position right now where they're losing market share is because they are a victim of success. You know, they very successfully exploited one way of doing things and one way of marketing their business. And that's gotten to where they are. But the problem is, is now that's not going to get them now to the next stage. So they've got to kind of unlearn a bit of that. And now they've got to go out there and find their fans. Because if they don't know who their fans are, they're simply customers. And the reason why they're being eaten from both sides of the market, from the top end and from the cheap end, is because these markets identify and actively engage fans. And those fans are converting Nokia people onto their brand. I mean, we talked, for example, just the other week about one lady who was a Nokia fan who, three times Nokia owner, suddenly switched over to BlackBerry and converted eight of her friends to BlackBerry. That's happening out there off the radar of Nokia. So one thing they've got to take away, it absolutely starts today, find the fans. Thank you for watching Mobile News TV this week and do come back next week where we answer more questions from our newsletter readers. If you want your question featured on the show, subscribe to our newsletter at www.mobileyouth.org slash download. You will also receive a free ebook on 50 mobile youth trends for 2011 with a subscription. We will all see you next week and in the meantime, check out where mobile youth has been in 2010 and where we plan to go in 2011 on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash mobile youth tour.